it's it's tough starting out and having that kind of negative influence around you, you know, questioning what you're doing, questioning the investments that you're making. Um, and it can really it can really hamper you. You're watching or listening to The Formula, where young professionals tell their stories and pay it forward by sharing the top lessons that they've learned in their careers. All right. Yeah. All right. Welcome again, guys, to another episode of uh, of The Formula, the show where we bring in professionals to, talk, to share their career stories and the biggest lessons that they've learned um, in their career so far. So, you know, the drill, I'm not going to really do an intro on these guys. I'm going to tell you who they are and just let them introduce themselves. So I have with me today uh corey and sean anderson right of homebird media guys how are you doing today doing well, doing well. <laughs> nice 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 so i know that there are going to be a lot of people um especially in jamaica who know you know you guys who know homebird uh, but for the people in the audience who don't know who you are right um just give everybody a little bit of your backstory and you know, tell them you know who you are what you do what you've been up to um yeah let's give them tell them a little bit of you awesome well, we're Humbird Media. We're the owners of Humbird Media, uh, which pretty much right now is is a two man team. Some persons still don't believe that because they're thinking, "Wow, you guys are doing so much, and it's just the two of you." Yeah, uh, it, it really is right now. Uh, we're looking to expand, but right now um, we can manage what we're doing now until it gets a little bit more overwhelming. That's when we start to take on some team members. Uh, what we're really specializing is websites, social media maintenance animations and graphic designs. So everything in terms of graphic design, like your logo designs, brand business cards, flyers, whatever it is that you need for your branding, you know, purposes. Uh, we've been doing this now for about a little over or a little under, oh, wow. is it over? Over four years. Okay. Officially. Uh, Shauna, she doesn't like to boast, but I boast for her. You know, she is the one that graduated with the, the, the honors, the top of the top class from, you know, Kyra Mack. Um, to this day, sometimes our lecturer would reach out to her and say, um, would you want to help me on this project? Because he has a business in a similar industry. Uh, you know, just to show you how great she is at what she does. Um, yeah, so <laughs> Corey, Corey is being very modest because he's actually the brainiac behind this whole operation. He studied actual science and, you know, he is the business man behind all of this. Plus, he's a designer as well. So mm -hmm. we're going to, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that he was able to leave his job at Sajikor. Um, 2018. 2018. And okay. run one Humber Media full time. So that's great. Nice, nice, nice. So actually, so actuary, so you're straight from Karamak, Sean, no? And yeah. um, Corey, you are it's an actuary and designer. You know, a lot of people don't get told the two can mix. You know, how, how did you make that work? Well, truly, I really got my training from, in design from the best in the game, Sean. Mm. <laughs> uh, I was leaving, uh, well, I was working at Sajikor, and we, we had started Humbird, um, which was in, uh, in 2016, November, so it was late 2016. And it's around that time you now, I took like a year, two years to kind of learn from her. Um, we did, of course, we did online training and you know went to youtube in university <laughs> and learned everything I could on youtube as well and um after those two years you know really got pretty much proficient mainly in like uh, video editing and, and animations she was still the expert in websites you know at that time still is i would say um and yeah just really use that that two years to really you know kind of harness that skill yeah. but I was always good with math and you know just econ and those things that you know actors you know do because yeah. I was really in, in that department that kind of underwriting and risk management that side of it. But truthfully, you know, it, it wasn't really going to go as far or as fast, you know, as as I wanted to go being right. in that. So for us, we we you know we saw this as the thing to build, you know, a business, and yeah. it was way more freedom. Um, and for our goals, like from when we first met and we were, you know, dating, courting, and we were there saying, you know, what do we want to do with our lives? Children was a big part of it. And, you know, we wanted to grow up our children a little differently than say we were growing up or as most people, you know, we want to be more involved, 
be there for most yeah. of the time. And we realized that the reason why we could, why we probably wouldn't be able to is because of our job. Um, mm. That would take up most of our time. So we were trying to figure out how could we make money without doing our job. Because yeah. as we got better at our jobs, they would promote us. And so we become more we invested. More time. Yeah. More time. <laughs> and, you know, she wasn't working at Sajid Course. It's not like we were spending time together. So mm. she at her workplace, I at mine. And as you know, which is most, most persons do, most couples, they work at different places. Say, you know, see you later in the mornings and then see each other in the night. And that's where their, their relationships really get built. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to do something different in terms of building our relationship in a stronger way and of course being there for our children so the solution to that was really leaving the job and mm -hmm. up a business that could you know allow us that flexibility to do what we're even doing right now which is working from home from our mm -hmm. home office mm -hmm. um so you know we really found that to be a great probably the strongest selling point of you know leaving the job and moving into you know full-time Okay. I mean, this is an interesting dynamic because you guys are the first, you're the first couple, <laughs> right? Married couple at that, that I've brought onto the podcast, you know? So this is, you know, it's going to be interesting hearing the rest of this conversation how you guys, like how you guys work both individually and, you know, as, and together. Um, all right. So moving into the next section, you know, you guys, you, you said that you guys are, you know, you deal with a lot of, you deal with web design, digital marketing, social media management, graphic design, you know, that's a, that's, there is a lot that happens in that space, you know, because I mean, being in that space as well, there's a lot that happens in marketing um, and in design, you know, how do you guys, two things, you know, how do you stay up to date with you know trends in design and marketing you know and just the information that you need to, to be able to you know serve your clients well and how do you stay relevant you know with respect you know with respect to the services that you offer with your clients right that's a great question brian um we well i i really love design and i think that that really helps me to love looking at things in spare time you know looking yeah. love searching instagram you know um we have specific websites that, that that i go to where you know i go daily so that mm. i can learn you know more what's out there you know what i can bring to my client or clients and um that's that's really what helps us to keep going is just that love for it and in terms of relevance i know uh for both of us it's like the designs that we do it's not, it's more uh, timeless. <laughs> so it's not, it's not, we don't really jump on the trains, you know, that often, you know, we, we, we look at what works in terms of design principles and that's yeah. how we design. Um, and that way, when we design something for our clients, it lasts for years and years because it wasn't about, you know, what's in today, you know, and, and then in a year's time, it's out. Right. So that's that's one of the ways that we stay relevant even for our brand as well you know mm -hmm. we're not we're not we're not quickly jumping on you know the latest social media trends you know we're just staying consistent you know and giving quality and talking about the things that persons have to manage and deal with no matter what trend is in. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, okay yeah and that's not to say that there's, there's there isn't any benefit you know in, in following a trend with you know other companies do it it's just to say that for us, we found um, by not doing that, it kind of builds our brand a little bit more because, as you said, the market is there's a lot of persons doing digital, you know, media marketing, and I think us not following trends as much also helps to set us apart. Mm -hmm. um, and even when persons will come on our page, they would perhaps even as they're scrolling, they will scroll and scroll and reach into 2019. But I'm not even realize it. <laughs> realize because there's no, um, you know, like kick up when they're kicking the bottle cap off our bottles or, you know, just just things that were for that moment and they're, yeah. they're not be reminded that oh that was last year. I mean oh wait I'm in 2019. What am I doing here? But they get to see a whole array of or more content and, and kind of be more blown away in that way. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Shauna, you mentioned earlier that there, you know, there are certain sites and platforms that you go to daily. You mind mentioning a few of those so the read so the you know viewers can catch on? Uh I mean there is it's really in battle because I'm really okay. yes. <laughs> animation, you know, and I'm always looking at you know what's new, what's out there. Yeah. Um, that's, that's that's really it. <laughs> really. Envato. I mean, I, I use Envato as well, so I can attest to the fact that it's it's really good. Um, okay. Um, so in all of the work that you guys do, right? And I know you you know you said you started out the gate by saying you know it's a two person team. I wouldn't have thought that. I actually thought it was you know there were more persons on the team than just the two of you. <laughs> um, so how do you? I mean, it must be there must be times when it gets you know very stressful. You know, there's a lot of either there's a lot of work or sometimes there's no work or you know just the type of work that you have to do. You know, how do you stay motivated? How do you keep going no matter what happens in the work environment? Well, that's tough, honestly, because mm. um, as you do something for a long time, um, it, it, it kind of gets difficult. And I think the, the, the most difficult part of it can be the people. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, not every client is, is, is a good fit. Let's just put it that way. Sometimes it gets a little difficult working with a particular client because we know that, for instance, with us, you know, we have a, a, a set kind of process in how mm -hmm. we just, um, um, you know, just how we do our project. And yeah. that process is, is good for the client because it really helps the work to be done quickly. And it helps them to understand what they're to do in, you know, in a, a, as easy a way as possible. But it also helps us because, as I said, it's just two of us right now. And we have to be able to kind of structure the time so that we can yeah. do each person, um, each, each client's project at a high level. Mm. But sometimes you might have some other clients that want a more free flowing, um, you know, relationship where they will call whenever, after hours. And you know it kind of gets it's not as doesn't gel as much with the workload that we have to do. Right, um, right. And sometimes, even though they would admit, you know, the work is great and everything, sometimes it it it, it may it may it may make us feel a little bit um, sad and discouraged sometimes when the client. Um, I guess you want to see more appreciation from their perspective of mm -hmm. all that you've been doing and all that you've put into place, and. Um, you know, it can get a little bit difficult being motivated, especially when um, you're doing it to help the client. Yeah. And that's, that's for us, that's pretty much our focus. You know, trying to ensure that, uh, well, as we say, helping you win, helping our clients win. Yeah. So that means you want to get more followers or you want to um, have your website up in the next two weeks or whatever it may be. We're going to do our best to help you win. And yeah. in doing that, it just make it, makes it seem as if we're not helping you. It gets it, it, it honestly can be demotivating, mm -hmm. uh, and it's something that we discuss probably every other week or every week. Um, how do we continue to just be motivated without yeah. not being um, discouraged? And I think the latest thing that we came up with was um, working outside of emotion in the sense of when you're down, you still do the work. Yeah. Yeah. Because what we found is we've been down, 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 <laughs> um, so down, and down to the point where you want to know how or if or when you'll ever get, get back, back up. up. <laughs> and you get back up. We get back up every time. And that happens so often. So we're saying, mm. okay, let's not be too focused in the moment when you're down because history has shown, has proven, you get back up. Yeah. So try to not let how you're feeling kind of dictate um, you getting that the job done and getting it well, getting it done well. That's another thing. Not just getting it done, yeah. but getting it done well. Um, so we've been trying to see how we can work without that kind of motivation um, um, to drive us. Mm -hmm. not okay. Despite how you feel, there's you still... You know that you're going to do good work. You yeah. still, you still have committed to your work, so you got to do it, and you just be nonetheless. I think that's something that um, I mean, especially any students who are gonna be watching this episode, or you know, should know. Like uh, there, there are times when I mean, yes, emotions are high, you know, tensions are high, and you kind of not feeling, 
you're, you're either not feeling the work. I mean, I can attest to that. <laughs> you're not feeling the work or you're not, you, you, you feel too low to do the work, you know, and you just have to step out. Of, you have to step out of your own skin and get the work done just, you know, because you're committed to getting it done. Um, that's a lesson. That's a, that's a tough lesson to learn, though. Like, that's a, that's a tough thing to, to, to step up to. Um, boy. So, that, so that's from, that's from Corey's side. So, Shauna, how do you stay motivated? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or, the, or, or is it is this a case of the two or one say so, you know you feel you are motivated the same way yeah i mean it's, it's basically the same thing because um we so we are married so we live together yeah. we work mm -hmm. in the same office together Corey works right over there um yeah. also this is your desk also Corey, yeah. you're intruding <laughs> right so um it's it we we share a lot of the emotions and mm -hmm. Really, we we this is really um something that I struggle with a lot. You know, Corey, he's generally motivated. He's always most of the time he's up, yeah. you know, and I think it, it the the issue of you know clients who are not appreciative or you know they they are are, are negative or, or any of that. Um I think that affects me more than it affects Corey. So mm -hmm. really it's like I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sad. I don't want to do this anymore, you know? And I think that really, it, it takes a toll on him, I'm sure, in terms of just saying, come on, we can still do this, you know? Um, yeah. and, and and it hurts sometimes, you know, but it's, I, I can definitely share it that just getting into that mode of saying, you know what, discipline, we're gonna do it and we're gonna do it well, and then that will be it. Mm -hmm. And usually what happens is that after you do the work, you feel better. Even if, even if it does, it's like it doesn't even matter what anyone says after that. You know, you know that you did your best and you did your best under these um, not, not that ideal circumstances. So it's like that, that, that discipline that you engender kind of pushes you to keep going. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's that's really good. All right. So we're going we're going to shift gears a little bit now. Um. So, in your like in your in your you know whether it was before Humbird or during you know your time you know running Humbird Humbird for the past few years you know there must have been some serious wins that you guys have had you know as Humbird Media. You mind sharing like what some of those wins were? Hmm. Early, I think one of the big wins was working with. Jane Fund managers, we did, a, mm. we did animations for them. And at the time, um, they were our biggest client because we, we at that time we didn't work with anybody that was, uh, you know, a popular company. Yeah. Um, so I think that was uh, a big win at that time. But that was a, that was a little bit far back. I mean, yeah. I, I, I guess a more recent win. I think there was that one time when uh, Andrew Holness came on our website mm -hmm. at our own oh. midnight, <laughs> you know, and messaged us on the chat, you know, and um, I think we were awake at the time and uh -huh. he was saying, you know, great job. And the author responded on the chat. So we weren't, we weren't on the computer, we we're on the phone. We we're right. at, so the author responder came on and said, Thank you. Who am I speaking with today? And he said, Prime Minister Andrew Holness. And when we saw that, you know, we we're like, what? He's jumping. <laughs> and then he started, you know, saying that um, he likes what we're doing, keep up the great work to help other Jamaicans. And I think that was a big win for us as well. So, so, how, you, so how you knew it was Prime Minister Andrew Holness? Suppose it was somebody, you know, pretending. <laughs> it could have been, but I think there was something specific. There was something that he said, uh -huh. exactly what he said, because that ran through my mind as well, but I had an answer, but I can't remember what it was. Yeah. But there was something specific that he said. Uh, that, that proved it was him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, if the prime minister of the country is taking notice of your work, I mean, you'd be doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was around the time of um, the prime minister, prime minister used the words. Words, And then he, yeah. was, okay. he was trying to get us to, to apply. Think mm. so many, yeah. To get, but, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I mean, there, there are several wins. I'm not sure what would be like a big win, but yeah. there, are, there are a lot of wins. And anytime, like when we build a website for a client, and 
the website starts to help them win. They start to sell their products on, through the website, even just this week or a week before, because um, we, we're fortunate to have clients all over the world. And mm -hmm. um, a particular client, we helped her um, build a website for selling her beauty products. Yeah. Uh, and within like a day after the website was up, she just started getting a lot of you know orders yeah. to the point where she had to just start labeling stuff as out of stock because everything started finishing and she was a little bit hesitant with everything because she was saying, wow, our website is a lot of money, mm. but will it make me back? You know, will it be a good investment? And so it was really happy to see, we were really happy to see that, um, you know, she could make back her money, you know, yeah. um, 10 times over, or over nine times over um, after building a website, you know? No. So Knowing that we experience, I wouldn't say they're like mm. big wins, you know, but we get a lot of wins. Ultimately, yeah. I think the, the best wins are those kind of wins that are relational when we feel good about working. Because sometimes we might work with a, we've turned on a lot of clients, like big names that you you say, let's work with them because they are a big name. Mm. But in just developing you know, even just finalizing the contract or after that first, you know, Zoom meeting, you know, sometimes, you know, because a company is big, they might tend to want to be a little bit, though they, I, it's from our perspective, might be a little bit abusive or maybe even disrespectful, you know, because mm -hmm. of this bigger size. So whereas a win to somebody else might be, hey, you land this big client. You know, a win to us might would more often be, wow, we're continuing, even though it's just a small client, we're con we've continued this relationship for the last year or the yeah. last months, and their business is growing. And so because their business is growing, they'll continue to be able to pay for yeah. the maintenance and so on. So that for us is is yeah. our way the wins are. Um, yeah. because ultimately that helps us to have the quality of life that you know, which that, you, that, you, that you envision for yourself, and yeah. I mean, I mean, that's a that's a that's a huge thing because I mean, everybody who's come on the podcast so far, their wins have been different, or their types of wins have been different, you know, and you know, not you don't hear people a lot acknowledging the smaller wins or what people what generally consider the smaller wins. So you saying that a win for you, um, I think it's I think it's important, you know, I think it's good that you highlighted that a win for you guys is more so when you work with a client and the client is doing well. And you know the, you're you're helping a win for you is when you help the client to win basically like what you yeah. say on your site you know yeah. <laughs> um, okay so following on the heels of that now um, you know what what would be like a major loss or you know a couple of the major losses that you've had since you've been running Humber Media biggest one I think was was um, early like after probably a year after we started or something about that. Um, there was one person whose website we were supposed to do, but uh -huh. um, they paid for it, everything. But I think at the time we had, I think we had the gym project or something. We had a lot of work on our hands, and it's not that we could have couldn't have done it. But at that time we weren't as structured as we are now. And as yeah. I guess, though we can be, of course, we can be more disciplined, but definitely not as disciplined as we are now. Um, and somewhere along the line, we were just procrastinating the start of it. Mm. And then that person's uh, um, it's yeah. HR man, I don't know, well, someone, his wife. Or his wife or <laughs> call, call the home birth phone, you know, answered, and she, 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 she gave us a chewing out, you yeah, know, bro. to say, Where's my website? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, look how long I pay for it. Like, you like, know? like, 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 <laughs> but still, yeah, yeah I, I guess, I guess. It, it it's felt like, that way, you know, and um, I remember because I mean we, we really just dropped the ball on that project, and we and uh, the only thing I could say to her was, "Oh, I understand exactly how you feel, you know, and and don't worry, by tomorrow we will send you your refund, you know, and you, and, and you can get back your money." And we're so sorry, we apologize. This I think is all right away. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Did you ask any question because we we were mortified. You know, because that's our standard. Mm. So we're yeah. not going to try to argue anything. You're right. You're 100% yeah. right. 
you're getting your refund and we don't deserve uh you know to 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 have this project but uh -huh. from that, that never happened again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. i mean if somebody's wife called, you know, you just say, like, all right, listen, <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's yeah. it. Happen again because we learn from that, and that's something that, as I said, that's not what we're trying to build. That's not the brand we're yeah. trying to build. So since that, we just ensure that any time we have a project, you know, whatever mm -hmm. commitment we give, commitments we give, we do our best to um, fulfill them. And if things happen, we're not saying that things don't happen, but even if something happens, we do our best to make up for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we're late, we're okay. Since we're late, we're gonna take off a day off the next revision that we're supposed to give you, so that we can come back on on track. But yeah. if we ever mess up or anything, it, it can for us it can't stay there. We have to ensure that we do something, um, at least in an attempt to make up for it. Yeah, yeah. and never to put ourselves in that position again where yeah. the only yeah. thing you can really do is give back the person their money and just yeah. say you're sorry. <laughs> Because for us, we hate it. We hate that. Even just the other day, um, you know, we brought one of our Macs to get fixed. When we reached, we realized that they're telling us that it has been destroyed in them trying to fix it. I mean, it's something that we could have fixed ourselves. Uh -huh. But we're saying, let somebody else do it because, you know, we yeah, can yeah, use the time to yeah. do something else and they can finish that. Right. But they were giving us some run around and by the time I reached, they're saying that this part in the back, whatever, was destroyed, and they're trying to accuse us now of did we bring it in with this part of it being, you know, in this matter? Right. Oh, because I was about to ask you, like, what happened after that? I mean, did they, yeah. did they, did they buy a new Mac? Like, that, I, I would have. That's what they're in the process of doing now, but we kind of push them to get to there. Yeah. They wanted not to do anything, you know, to make up for it, really. And yeah. And at some points, they're accusing us for, I don't know, just trying to cover up their mistakes. So, uh -huh. for us, that's like, we hate when that is done to us. Right. So, we don't want to do that to anyone. If we make a mistake, just own up to it and, um, you know, be mm -hmm. able to make up for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. That's, that's, that that is that is admirable. I should I should tell you that um, because I mean we do know sadly the reality of, of Jamaica is that there's a lot of poor customer service going around. Even with you know everything that's happened in the past year, you know it's still it's still a thing. You know that um, customer service is down there. So to see that you guys are stepping it up, making sure that your clients, you know, it, it's less. You know, for you, I, I I didn't hear anything about the money a while ago outside of the refund. You know, for you it's about the quality of service, which is which is really good um all right so stepping into another video now. so we're going a bit we're going a bit more personal now right so you know you had you know you had mentioned sean had mentioned discipline some time ago um a little while ago all right but for each of you there must be some you know i'm sure there are some some habits and hobbies that you guys keep uh that help to keep you on track like with a personal you know with personal goals or with business goals um what are some of those hobbies for each of you i'm not sure if they're the same you know because you guys are in the same household and you know doing the same things but <laughs> <why not? laughs> it's 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 funny you know because both of us are like okay you go, <laughs> no, no, you go. Um, and i think it's because um we're we're very business oriented um, yeah. in terms of our business uh, because we, we, we run other businesses as well in addition to Humber Media and it's really a part of us you know and it's really a part of where we're going you know in our own personal lives you know yeah. and so it's it's always it's always to the um I mean, I mean, sometimes we you know we watch TV, you know. <laughs> and, that sounds like I'm not often. <laughs> we go out and you know get some food, you know. But a lot of the times we're really just home. If we're not working, we're talking about work, and it it sounds bad, but we're not really talking about work in terms of the work work, but in terms uh -huh. of our goals and where we want to go and yeah. what what we're doing, what we'll um getting these things done achieve you know and then really we don't spend a lot of time dream building you know a lot of times mm -hmm. saying okay you know children or you know later on in life you know and and that's really it's that's really all we do <laughs> really we watch i mean pretty watch tv like 
like even the last two weeks, every day, I mean, Netflix or whatever, we'll have a nice series that we'll watch. But um, I think ultimately, if we're doing a hobby that kind of it doesn't aid the goal, we just don't do it. So, like me, yeah. I do basketball. Ever since I've been a sports person, you know, um, captain football and captain football. When I was at Sajid Corps, captain everything and whatever. But at a certain point, you start to realize that if you go up by, where the place name run? Run um, Devonos. Um, play football. They have like not football, football. Not, not football factory, but places like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go over and you're playing ball with some some guys and um, though you're getting that physical benefit, um, and, social. and social, there is a tendency to um, be kind of distracted sometimes because some of those guys, um, you just don't have the same same mindset. So you're like you're they're not necessarily saying okay after this they have to reach on because they have this um, podcast that they have to prepare it for you know they have right. a meeting they have this kind of thing for their business. No, most of them might just have a job. So the way how they interact with you and how they structure their time and, you know, how even they, they, they prioritize their hobbies might be different, um, you know, when it comes down to you. For them, they need their hobby because their job is stressful and this is their break. Right. For you, um, it's not necessarily that you hate your business. This hobby is for more so a health purpose, you know? Right, right, right. Um, for bodily benefit but sometimes when you interact with persons that aren't of the same mindset you start to know you know some of that mindset might rub, rub off on me and some of mine might run off on them and then it's like we just have two different mindsets yeah. and pretty soon i'm here working on homebird but i don't know just my 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 your know, demeanor changes kind of everything just kind of changes and it has happened you know, I'm speaking from it has happened. That's why right now I don't really go as much to play ball with them or shoot yeah. hoops or whatever. Uh, because I realize just the mindset is different, you know. So some of the times for us right now, our hobbies aren't you know, we don't have a long list. Um, and it's primarily because we know a lot of hobbies entail interacting with other person that might not be of the similar the mindset that yeah. One mindset is better than the other, or whatever, just to say that they have a different, you know, path and what they're doing. Right, and right. As when, if we find persons who are of the same mindset, we have no problem. Like Shauna loves singing. Shauna loves, um, well, she loves watching tutorials and how to do stuff. Um, <laughs> but I like playing sports. And if we ever find persons who, um, like those stuff and we can hang out and everything that's fine yeah. as long well as because that won't necessarily jeopardize the overall you know life goals that you're trying to achieve of yeah, yeah. being a homeowner be, having several businesses and earning this amount of you know income and so on but if it kind of jeopardizes those goals that's when the hobbies you know don't become so fun yeah yeah that's that's an important thing to note because you know, you have a lot of people who will, like you, like you had pointed out. You know, those, you know, those guys that used to play, you know, ball with. You know, you'd go out and they're doing it because it's a de-stressor. You know, not just for the physical activity, but it's a de-stressor from work. So their vibe is definitely going to be different than you guys. Who, you know, when you guys talk about work, you're doing something that you want to do. You know, there's yes, there's stress, but is it? Is, you see it as good stress because this is you building your life together. As you said, Sean, you know, you guys are dream building. You know, you dream build a lot. You know, so you go to the court and for you, you're going to the court because you love basketball and, you know, but this is just another thing that you love doing. And yes, you get in physical benefit, but, you know, this is, this is just another part of life that is helping you, you know, along with helping Humbird Media and that there's just a circle effect. While for them, there may be some more negative energy that's in there that you not necessarily, that you don't necessarily want to bring on. And that's an important point for the audience, you know, um, because as you rightly say, you don't want to, spend too much time with the wrong you know people you know with people who put off the wrong energy because when you take that on to yourself boy that that will that can be catastrophic for the things that you're trying to achieve you know so that's a that's a that's a good point all right so this segment was so this is the last um 
segment of the whole podcast and this has become my favorite part of the podcast um so what i want you to do for the audience now um i want you guys to give me or rather to give them share with them the three biggest lessons that you've learned um from your time running over your careers running you know humber media or just generally over your careers you know three biggest lessons that you've learned um that you think might help the audience you know if they apply them to their own careers uh I can, go, I can go first. I think yours might be a little different. Mm -hmm. But my top three might be keep going, you know, just having that kind of endurance. Because as I said, I, as I said before, you might have these down days, but they will come and they will go. So yeah. if you start to make those down days, control everything, you're, you're really going to, I guess, limit yourself. But, and this is not a downplay, it's hard. I'm not going to lie. It's hard to kind of keep motivated and um, keep going. But um, for us, as we say, we're trying to not be too caught up with how we feel. Um, but we, are, we also remind ourselves the benefits that we get from, from building our business and the freedom. And even just looking back, sometimes you can look back just to see where you're coming from. Yeah. And we've seen where just building this business has created a totally way better life um, than before when we were working in our jobs. Mm -hmm. So. You can do that to kind of encourage you, you know, to move forward. Like it's a little different than motivation. It's like encouragement, you know, encouraging yourself every now and again um, to, to keep going. Yeah. Uh, to keep going, you can also, listen, if you make money, don't be afraid to spend it because that's something that we we just mm -hmm. don't like to do sometimes. Yeah. don't want to spend our money. <laughs> For a rainy day. I like when you guys smile at the same time. It's like, yeah, we're not, we don't like spending that money. <laughs> but we have to, and we're like, we have to kind of, and that's just something that is how we grew up, you know, growing up, you never have, a, have any money. And you mm -hmm. know, if I wasn't rich or anything like that. So you have to kind of, you kind of have to train yourself to, to invest, you know? Yeah. And sometimes an investment not, might not be buying a Mac or buying whatever. It might be just buying yourself a good outfit or whatever, a good shoe. Some persons might do that for a different reason. But mm -hmm. you can also spend your money to do something that you like. And that yes. will help you keep going. Because in those rainy days, you're going to be like, oh, wait, this has afforded me to get the shoes, to get the shirt, to get the thing that I always wanted. And you can yes. use that as, uh, you know, just a kind of encouragement to keep going. So, but whatever it is, don't give up. So keep going. This is like number one for me. Yeah. Um, number two is partnerships. Um, I don't know what happened with the Mac. I just feel it was just a wrong partnership that was established. And I don't know what the Mac, of course, everything you learn the lessons and so on. And um, we kind of spun it to, to get a benefit out of it. But at the same time, um, many businesses, we've, we've, we've started and before it could even reach anywhere, we've stopped businesses mm -hmm. because we realized we're the partner, like the supplier. Um, was unreliable. Right. So we don't even go down the road. It doesn't make sense because someday down the line, if you have a bad partnership, mm. that bad partner is going to mess you up. Yeah. Especially when you're building a brand. Just keep keeping the brand in place where you're saying, okay, I want this to be viewed in a certain, certain such a way. Um, so having having good partnerships is definitely one. Is definitely one for me. And I think maybe a third one, third one, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe one of Shauna's, so probably oh. she can tell us. <laughs> um, so I'm going to agree with what Corey has said, uh, but I think one of the things that we've learned throughout this business journey <laughs> is that um, you have to be careful about the people who you're around. And especially when you're starting out as an entrepreneur, it's entrepreneurship has become more popular, you know, but it's still, some people might think it's not the wisest thing to do. Um, mm. Maybe, maybe your parents, maybe friends, you know, uh, your boss who doesn't want to leave your job, you yeah. know, and it's, it's tough starting out and having that kind of, negative influence around you, you know, questioning what you're doing, questioning the investments that you're making. Um, 
and it can really it can really hamper you you know you can really force you to give up you know or think you're not good enough and i think one of the most important things that especially especially when starting out um and you're really just getting getting your your footing and learning how to do it is to surround yourself with persons who not yes people but people who are going to encourage you you know stay away from the bad mind people <laughs> you know sure. and um just just be aware that those kind of people are everywhere you know they're they're in your your group of friends they're in your group of family you know they're in your workplace and it sounds it sounds bad but it's true you know and you really have to just protect your mind you know be careful about what you share with persons you know and just really feel people out to find out if this is somebody i can build with if this is somebody who i can share my wins and my losses with yeah um so i think i think it's 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 similar to partnerships but it's really on a more personal level you know the people who you have in your life ensure that they're supporting you because this is not an easy journey and um there are a lot of persons who are going to smile with you and stay there with you you know but they're they really aren't you know so i guess i guess one one thing for me uh, that i had to learn is to stop being naive you know <laughs> and stop thinking that just because you're nice to everyone doesn't mean that they're going to be nice to you. You know, you have to just set, set your standard, you know, know where you stand and then just say, hey, are you with me? Are you against me? Are you in support of me? You know, and let's just let's just call it what it is and move yeah. on. That's a good trait to develop in terms of just being able to like, read people. And sometimes, yeah. you know, a person might be like, they're frenemies, you know, they're there, but... Yeah. <laughs> And when you really start to realize when um, you start things start happening for you and, and good starts happening for you, and then they're not so happy for you. So you're like, okay. So, but it's, it's just to kind of recognize that as well. I think that's a, a good thing to develop. So I get it. Yeah. So far, it's keep going, no matter what, meaning having that endurance. Um, what was the second one? Partnerships. Partnerships. Wait, it's partnerships. This is partnerships. And I guess right. I is is also looking at first relationships. relationships. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But I, it's 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 something that people don't like to talk about, you know. And <laughs> we have no problem talking about it, you know, but it's a really serious thing. You know, persons don't want to offend persons, they don't want to make the place awkward. But if you really want to be successful, you're gonna have to be willing to stand up for yourself, you know, and yeah. see what needs to be said, you know, and Move on. I like that. What that what Sean is saying is like, uh, there's another point. To, like it's the same thing, but it's like your personal growth. And I, 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 I hate when persons talk about personal growth. Hey, go grow yourself. And I'm like, how do you do that? You know, why are you telling persons to grow themselves? Nobody, you know, what I mean, how do you do that? Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's like what Sean is saying. It's being able to look at toxic persons in your life and having the bravery because it's hard. Some of them are like you. Yes, you, you, your friends are growing with your sister, and it can be a mother, can be a father. It just can be persons who are close to you, and you know, being able to say, well, if this isn't isn't healthy for me, having that bravery to say, at the very least, talk to them about it, you know, and just not not keeping that you know under the rug and acting like everything is okay, and you know, no, addressing it, and yeah. that is a way how you can grow you know personally so even us when we do know because we've had to we've had to have some tough conversations with you know just just persons who are very close or i can probably can't say work as we're not as close but uh you know persons who help us helped us you know in our in our in our younger days and just growing up but ultimately even those discuss those discussions have helped us to be more confident you know, and sure. So even when we come into a consultation or a podcast or, you know, we're doing an interview or whatever it is, we, our personality, our character, you know, has yeah. really grown. So even stuff like that, just making decisions to kind of get toxic persons out of your life, like seriously, not in, a, in an abstract way, really literally saying, if you want to make a list, mental or, or physical, and then actually saying, I'm going to set aside a time 
by a phone call or Zoom or in person, in person keeping uh -huh. COVID six feet apart or whatever, and say, I need to speak with this person because I think we're going to overlook it because it's not something that makes you money right away. Uh -huh. Oh, I mean, they're just afraid of it. I mean, okay. like you, like you said, like you said earlier, they're afraid. They may, they may be somebody who's extremely close to them, who you know they don't want to either ruffle the feathers or ruin the relationship or whatever. But definitely, it's something that it, it, we were afraid too. But it's definitely something that has changed our life. Like we, we, we couldn't even see. Uh, um, even when I just started, you know, dating with Sean, Sean would say, see certain persons in my life that were. You know, not necessarily treating me how I should. And mm. she's the one that says, you know, Corey, no, no. How that person that person is treating you is not is not right. Mm. But I couldn't see it because you know it's just that's how our relationships with that person or those persons were. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately after cutting out or you know getting rid of those that toxicity, your, your life is I mean, your, your thoughts, you even think of new business ideas, you even think Thoughts you wouldn't have had in your mind before. Mm. So it is it is like probably one of the most overlooked um, acts because everybody knows, and I know probably I'm going on too long, but I want to say the same way because a lot of persons talk about Christmas and how you know that stats there are statistics about how that's sometimes the worst time of the year, you know, for and that's when families come together, mm. and it's bad because a lot of persons don't have the type of relationship that they want to have with their families and because nobody talks and nobody gets you know toxicity out um mm. it, it's it's a real thing it's a real thing so. and, and eventually it affects your business ultimately so eventually you know there's gonna come to a come a point where yeah you've been growing with these toxic persons but you can't go any further mm. you know there are times yeah. There were times in, in our earlier stages when we started to get more successful in Humber Media, you know, there was the thought of, should we get this, you know, because it will be helpful. But we're like, but what will certain persons think, you know, mm -hmm. and like, should we share this success? No, let's keep it to ourselves because what would this person think, you know, mm -hmm. and I think if you... If you are around that kind of environment, then that's going to affect you as a person. And it's gonna affect your business as well. Because ultimately, all this that you're seeing, Humbird is really how Humbird is is because of Corey Sean. How sure. you know, your business will be is because of you and your team. It's really just because of the people. There is no Humbird media is, is really just the yeah, it's I, not a hummingbird it's just sitting around. It's, it's just <laughs> like, but what gives it the 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 brand and the feel and the importance and the you know. It's the people, and right. if the people really get um, strong in their character and confident and all those things, then soon you see the brand, you know, it's this amazing brand. And it's the same, it's the reverse. When you go into certain places and you're getting this bad customer service, it's not it's not the place, it's the people who run in the place. And, you know, unfortunately, because of who they are, that's the type of bad experience that they that you're get. Getting, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Boy, that was a that was that was a lot. I know I know that the audience is gonna get a. I mean, even from just the initial three points, but definitely from when definitely you guys expanding on it. Um, like I don't think you realize how much how much gold was in everything that you said in this in this podcast episode. You know, so thank you guys definitely for coming on. Um, you know, taking the time. You know, because I'm sure. I mean, you say it's a two person team. You guys must be loaded with work. You know, so thank you for taking the time, you know, to sit on the podcast and share your story as well as, you know, your, you know, your lessons for career development. Awesome. It's not a pleasure, Brian. Yeah. And I know, and I mean, I, I know, I know that we'll talk again in the future. I know that we'll talk again sometime in the future. I'll, I'll reach out. I'll reach out at some point. And we can do a, we can do a follow up. <laughs> can do no, some no. All right. Guys, this has been another episode of The Formula, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching The Formula. 
If you liked that episode, do me a favor, hit the like button and let us know what you thought about it in the comments. If you know someone who could use the advice or the inspiration from this video, go ahead and share the video. Share it up. Just share it up. And for more episodes in the series, please, 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 please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. I'll see you in the next one.